And if someone doesn't, if there's a turd in a punch bowl, I flush it. She is just freaking out. Look at that. <laughs> Oop, don't need the direction on, you can leave that off. Today on In the Wood Yard, I got a trail load full of wood that needs to go into a bin. So we're gonna do some wood chucking right now. Here we go. So yesterday, Bert and Adam and I worked on splitting wood and putting wood into the bin. We did one complete trail load full that I split and actually Bert and Adam both helped me with that one. And then we put it into the bin and then Adam and I filled this one up uh, by splitting. I'll show you kind of what's left here. Um, so the stuff that's in here right now, we did yesterday, kind of at the end of the day, we worked almost right till dark. This is a pile that's already been re-split. So it's ready to go. We just gotta scoop that up and put it in a trailer. So this is what's left here. We've been throwing all the cookies and odd chunks just back in this corner here because we're gonna eventually put them into a tote. We just were out of totes that were open uh, that we can move around and use. So we'll eventually we'll, we'll get them in there. All this debris is starting to build up because we've just been kind of splitting in the same area. We just kind of keep pushing the pile this direction. So what we've done when we started, the pile of wood was right out to about right here. So all this, we've just been pushing that direction, kind of migrating it over to the splitter. And then we kind of been working over in that area and then all the debris is kind of building up right over in here. But all this stuff here needs to be resplit yet. We figured there's at least two more trailer loads full there yet that need to be resplit. And uh, I'm not gonna do any splitting today because I got lots of other stuff I have to get done. But the reason I'm going to be unloading this trailer right now, it's really full, is that I need this trailer because in a couple days, I'm gonna be going with Tyler. Uh, he's a guy that comes to the woodyard here and works once in a while. You've seen him before, he's got the big beard. And uh, he bought a brute, floor, brute force splitter and uh, I told him, I said, hey, when you get it, when it comes in, when it's done, he ordered it I don't know, a couple months ago and it's done now. I said, hey, when it's done, I'd like to go with you. And uh, we're gonna be using my trailer to go get it. We're gonna take his truck, my trailer, cause it's a pretty big splitter and we're gonna haul it back with that. And then when we go there, we're gonna actually do some videos while we're there, a video where we're gonna talk to Josh and the guys there at Brute Force and we're gonna get a little tour of the factory and see some of their stuff. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. And that'll happen in a couple days. So I gotta get the trailer emptied now because I'm gonna be gone for a couple days. Although you're still gonna get videos because I've got lots of them. I just keep pumping them out just for you guys. And uh, we're gonna get this unloaded and uh, get some stuff cleaned up. So time to chuck some wood right now. Hope I got enough uh, space here where I can get the, the leg lifted up on the jack here. It's uh, bottoming out right now. I got a lot of wood in the trailer and I'm just gonna, it froze last night so I thought I could use my truck. Oh yeah, I should be able to kick it off of here. There, I'll do this just for now. Oh, there we go. That was scary. The trailer's got a lot of weight on it right now. It's way, way overloaded for what it can actually even hold, let alone the weight. Don't need this because we're just going out into the field. But I do want to lock this down because I'm going to be uh, lifting it up, tilting it to chuck it out. So. And normally I would use a tractor for this because uh, going out into the, the field is usually pretty mushy. Uh, but last night it froze really good. It got down to like 20 or something like that. So I just drove out there a little bit and it's froze. So this way I don't have to go start the tractor up, bring it out here, warm it up, hook it up, all that kind of stuff. I just take the truck out there and unload it. So that's what's gonna happen. So out we go. Yeah, that's rock hard. Excellent. Oh, I can just tell there's a load in there. How do I look? Do I look good driving my old truck? I kind of thought so. Come on, baby. Gotta go up a hill here. But there's not really much ice. So. Look at how high that load is. I don't think I'd be going down the highway with it like that. There's probably a for sure five face cords in that load. Because I know if I go just to the top of the boards, 
it's uh, at the top of the boards. It's four face cords and it's heaping, heaping. But that's okay. We're just going out to the bin here. So, but no, I'm just moving the camera so you guys can see me driving up here. So I had to go pick it up, and move it. And I got to move some pallets here because we're going to be going right into this bin. And I got to add a couple pallets. Let's see. Let's go down this way with you guys so all you fine folks can watch me move pallets. There we go. Yeah, I backed up a little too close there because usually I like to leave about four foot of space between the pallets and the back of the trailer because as I tip it up, this part right here will come closer. So you want enough room, you can work back here. So if the avalanche or wood comes, you can move out of here quick and not die. Because not dying is my number one rule, as a lot of you know, don't get dead. Okay, we're gonna tie this puppy together and then start chucking some wood here. It's cold out here again today. The wind picked up, it's only about 20 degrees. Yesterday we had like 43 or 44 degrees, no wind, sunshine. It was absolutely gorgeous yesterday, but not today. Let's see, let's go this way with this one. That'll work. Gotta cut some wire. So far this has been working pretty dang good, I gotta say, um, the bin. I think we'll be good. So while I'm doing this, I just thought I would talk about some things that have been on my mind lately as far as the YouTube channel, my channel, the one you're watching right now. And uh, I wanna just talk about kind of the etiquette of the channel and what YouTube expects and some of you might not know. If uh, people bring up controversial issues and then fight about it, not good. Um, if there's people that get political, not good. I try to stay pretty neutral most of the time, most of the time. Um, and I try not to offend anybody, which is almost impossible because you're never gonna make everybody happy, I found out. Especially when there's people that you can't make happy no matter what. Because if you give them a $100 bill, they would complain that it wasn't a new $100 bill. There's people like that, as you know. But the number one thing on the channel that I'd have to say is just people in general not fighting amongst each other. It's not good. Um, I don't see too much of it and you guys don't see hardly any of it because I eliminate it right away. Um, I go in on the comments usually right away in the morning and then it's once in a while middle of the day and then usually at the end of the day I go and I just, if there's people on there that are being, uh, if there's someone that's not nice, I just eliminate them. And, there's three ways I can eliminate people. I can eliminate the comment, which is an easy thing. I can eliminate uh, the person from being seen on the channel permanently, which is real easy to do. It's one click and they're gone. And uh, the other thing I can do is I can actually report them to YouTube. And not only will they get eliminated from my channel, they can get eliminated from YouTube and they gotta go start a whole nother account up. So anything they've done will be gone. So people don't realize that you're playing on someone else's playground and it's not even my playground. I just kind of am a supervisor somewhat. And uh, as far as YouTube goes, you know, they want everybody to get along, which is impossible because every once in a while, as you know, most people are great. 90, 8.375% of people, whatever it is. There's a couple percent of people that uh, just want to be a turd in a punch bowl. Don't be a turd. Um, be a person that uh, gets along. You can disagree, but in a nice way. There's ways to talk about things. You can, instead of just saying, you're stupid, you mf -er. you don't know what the heck you're talking about, or blah de blah blah using all the wrong words. That's not the way to do it. The way you do it is say, well, I used to do it that way. If it's something you're trying to get across is a point that you think uh, you know more than the other guy, which you probably do. Um, you say something like, uh, I used to do it that way, but then I did it this way and found it worked better. Give it a try. It helped me a lot. Good luck. 
that's a nice way to handle it instead of saying you're an idiot you don't know anything you're the stupidest person on here and then using foul language that's not a good thing you will get eliminated fast um, and in general I would say people that are like that don't have many friends which is why they're on YouTube and uh, they think they can say whatever they want you can't I mean you can say whatever you want but you're not gonna last long um, there's a lot of people that don't realize on YouTube that uh, there's a huge volume of people that get um, eliminated and there's a huge volume of people that um, don't stay as contributors and don't stay as people that are um, commenting on the channel um, I think my turnover is pretty equal to what a lot of people have found um, like I've got I don't know 40 some thousand subscribers I probably have two or three thousand people that have either been eliminated YouTube took down or they just unsubscribed it happens I mean it's no big deal and I realize it's impossible to keep everybody happy it's not a it's not a, a thing that's even possible to do so I try to go for the overall make everybody get along kind of a thing and if someone doesn't if there's a turd in a punch bowl I flush it so don't be the turd nobody likes turds well unless you use it for fertilizer I guess or unless you've had a hard time getting rid of one generally you don't want to keep them you want to get rid of the turds all right the cage is complete i got wires going across the top i extended this out a bunch so now i can start chucking the wood Well, as you can see folks, the uh, pile is growing and the cat is here to help debark, sc scratching its claws on the bark. So doing a good job there, cat. And this is a female and she's got a round belly. So I think you know what that means. So I think she's gonna have some kittens. <laughs> so, which is good, we want more cats, cats are good. So the pile is getting long. I'll take you for a little walk so you can see what I've got here. This is, uh, I don't know, the pile just keeps growing. Um, I gotta go down to the end and count to see how many pallets we've actually got here, um, lengthwise. So it's too wide and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 or so, 12 to here anyway. So there it is, that's how many how long it is. I think we've got five trailer loads full into this uh, pile here now. That took me longer than all the other ones I've done so far by myself. Usually I can do them about 25 minutes or so. Yeah, hello. That one took about 35 minutes. It was a big load. And uh, so it's in. Now I'm gonna go dump some debris over into the burn pile out of here because there's a bunch of debris. Because if we left it in, the that's two times worth is what's in there. We didn't take it out the last time. So that's how much debris is left in there. So now we're gonna take it over to the burn pile and gonna dump it out over there. So that's what's happening next. So yeah, I want to get this cleaned out because we're going to be using this to haul Tyler's new splitter. So I'll get all this debris out. You know, it froze in a little bit on the bottom. So last night it got cold and it was wet on the bottom there. And I know some of you are saying, that's good stuff, you should be burning it. Well, we're gonna burn it right here in the burn pile. It's not worth my time to dig through scraps for kindling. I got plenty of kindling just with the regular stuff. But what I'm thinking of doing is once we get to where we've got some more daylight and weekends, have Bert's son Gavin, I'm gonna get some bags that I can use. And uh, I'm going to have him start to dig through this stuff as we're doing it. And he can fill bags 
and what I'll have them do is I'll put everything like this, like this is perfectly good kindling right here, but even all the way down to the chunks uh, like this stuff and uh, stuff like this, it's just kind of the shards of stuff that comes off from the splitter and from the chunks of wood, you know, it always happens no matter what, but even down to the chunks like this, he can put all those right into a bag, We're gonna get some bags and then uh, we can sell those or give them away to people that order a bunch of wood and uh, have a, uh, have a either a free item I can give out to people or another product to sell but I just don't have time to do it myself because I got too many other things going on speaking of other things um, I want to go disconnect the trailer and I'm heading over to my brother's my brother Eric's and uh, Kenny and I are meeting there and we had some friends of ours that have been beaver trapping in the southern zone of Wisconsin and uh, they had to quit because they had to go back to work but they said there was uh, the beaver were just starting to uh, move because they move a lot in the springtime and they're starting to see a lot of sign and they're going to take us out tomorrow today and tomorrow and we're going to do a scouting trip and see how much is there and maybe start doing some beaver trapping in the southern zone because the northern zone it's well, it's like here, pretty much it's froze over yet. There's ice everywhere, snow everywhere. You know, there's there's three and a half, four feet of snow. It's just bad. We might not get much beaver trapping in the northern zone this year because of it. We've got about five weeks of season left, and we need it to open up in the next week or two in order to, to uh, do what we did last year. So if you want to watch the beaver trapping videos, that's what I'm going to be working on next for the next few days. We're going to be on uh, the other channel out of the wood yard and we're going to be having some trapping videos put on there that you're going to see beaver traffic with me and Ken. So that's what's going to be happen. I'm done for today here. I got stuff I got to go do and get ready and pack up and head out. So right now, um, I think that's it. You're going to go watch another video. Watch the one on the screen. That's a good one. Otherwise, 5.30 tomorrow morning, there'll be another video for you because I got lots of them banked. You're going to see them. Good night, Irene. Well, I'm gonna head up. I got a co-pilot. She jumped in with me. <laughs> oh, I'll turn that off. So she's never had a ride in here before. Look at, she doesn't know what to do. She's panicking. She's never been in a vehicle. She's tried to get out. She actually slammed her head against the uh, the window. Now she's going to the back. She's like, I gotta get out of here. What's going on? <laughs> she is just freaking out. Look at that. <laughs> Oop, don't need the direction on, you can leave that off.